Recently, my algorithm has been showing me these complex motion design tutorials in After Effects, which blew my mind. I wondered how close I could get to these animations in Canva. Well, after nearly a month of trying, I've finally come up with something that truly compares. And as an added bonus, I've repurposed the design as a title reveal animation with sound design and music. Let's get straight into it. Open Canva and create a new design. I'm using a 16 by nine video crop, but you can follow along in mobile video format if preferred. Let's first change the background color of the canvas to black. Now let's start on the 3D grid layer. Press R on your keyboard to create a square shape. With the shape selected, set the corner rounding to 10. Hold Shift, then resize the shape, reposition it to the right of the screen. Then hold Alt and Shift on your keyboard and create eight more versions. Select all layers, open the position tab, and click on the horizontal spacing feature to ensure the shapes are aligned properly. Now group the line of squares together and, with Shift and Alt held on your keyboard, create four duplicates, making sure all are spaced evenly. Select all layers, center them on the canvas, and with Alt and Shift selected, enlarge them to the edge of the canvas, like so. At this point, we can change the color of the squares. Let's use a blue tone in contrast with the black background. Export the grid as a PNG file with a transparent background. Then open the Apps section and search for an app called Transform Image. Import the PNG file into the app. And as you can see, we can now control the perspective of the image to make a 3D grid. Pretty cool, right? With the image in its default state, slowly push the grid forward to achieve the desired outcome. Try to ensure that it stays level while altering the perspective. When you're ready, click Add to Design then reposition the layer to the bottom of the canvas. Now let's duplicate the layer, and with the second version selected, open Edit, select the Adjust section, and use the Color Edit tool to change the color to something more vibrant. You'll see why we do this later. Now let's get started on our glowing ball. Create a new page, change the background to bright red, then press R on your keyboard to create a square shape. Open the color panel, select Add New, and open the gradient section. Change the first color to jet black and decrease the transparency to 0%. Change the second color to black and add a third black color to the palette. Then under the style section, change it to a circular gradient like so. Now create another black square. Resize it so it covers this section of the canvas. Then repeat this process until the whole page is covered. Select all the layers and change the transparency to 80%, then group them together and copy the group over to the page with the grid. If you move the layer around, you will see that we have created a spotlight effect. At this point, we need to dramatically increase the size of the layer. So now let's add the ball. Open the Elements tab and search for Blue Magic Ball. Select this one, resize it, and place it just above the circular gradient. Now search for Blue Transparent Gradient Circle. Select this one, place it over the ball, and group both layers together. Now group the spotlight and ball layers together. Move them around and you can see the design is starting to take shape. Now it's time to start animating. Open the position tab, select the ball group, and move it to the left of the canvas so it is just out of view. With the whole group selected, open the animation panel and select the custom animation function. Now delicately draw a path that resembles a bouncing ball. The animation is very sensitive, so you may need to attempt the path multiple times. When you draw something relatively close to a bouncing animation, open the Movement Styles panel and preview both options. They offer a smoother finish that should clean up any drawing errors. When you are ready, right-click on the top grid layer and select Show Timing. Select the thumbnail zoom function and zoom in to 500%. Grab the start of the grid layer in the timeline and crop it to the point where the ball first lands on the grid. Crop from the other end so it appears for about 0.2 of a second. With the layer still selected, open the animation panel and give it a neon animation. 
Let's preview the results. Now copy the flashing grid and place a new one at every point where the ball lands. You may need to adjust the position in the layers panel for each one. Now let's preview the whole scene. Nice. Time to move on to the title reveal scene. First, duplicate the page, then open the text section and select add a heading. Type out motion in all caps and place two spaces between M and T to make room for the ball. Change the font to something more suitable. I'm using the Makoto Glitch font, which matches well with the overall theme of the design. Enlarge the wording and align it along the top of the grid layer, like so. Now grab the ball group layer and position it in the slot where the O should be in motion. You may need to adjust the sizing of the wording at this point. It's important not to alter the size of the ball. Now change the font color by sampling once from the ball image. Then open the effects panel and give it a neon effect like so. With the ball in place, use the guidelines to create a box around it to ensure exact positioning before we start animating. Now open the position tab, select the ball group and move it off to the right of the canvas. Select the animation panel and redraw the animation path so it appears to bounce back into the frame and land in the guide box like so. Reposition the secondary grid layers so they match with the bounces. Right click on the text layer, select show timing, then adjust the timing so it appears when the ball bounces into place. With the text layer still selected, open the animation panel and give it a neon animation. Now let's duplicate this page. Make sure to readjust the timing of the text layer, remove all animations, and reposition the ball to the guide box so it appears here from the start. Open the text section, add a heading, and type out design. Change the font to knock out sumo, align it to the right, and in the effects panel, give it an outline effect like so. Reposition it to the right of the text layer, then slightly increase the letter spacing like so. Time for some sound design. Open the audio tab, filter for sound effects, and search for Basketball Bounce 20. Select this one, place it on the timeline, and align it with the first bounce of the ball. Reduce the volume to 50%, and let's preview how it sounds in action. It's a good start, but I think we need to add more layers to give it more of a futuristic vibe. Go back to the audio tab and search for MM button 30. Place it directly below the ball bounce layer and reduce the volume to 3%. Let's go one step further by generating a futuristic movement sound in 11 labs. The prompt I used was Star Wars lightsaber to generate this sound. By the way, Eleven Labs has recently introduced this Explore tab, which has a massive library of AI-generated sound effects. And the best part is you can download them without using up any of your credits. If you use my affiliate link below to sign up, it would really help out the channel. Now let's add the movement sound just before the bounce and do the same for each bounce in this scene. Open the audio tab again and search for Hotel Room Light 1 and align it with the start of the title animation. You can crop out the loud switch sound at the start. Let's also align the design layer to appear just as the switch sound happens at the end of the sample. Now let's create some fitting music in Udio. The prompt I used was synth, atmospheric, soothing, playful, nocturnal, jingle. 
A few generations later, I found something very close to what I had in mind. Place the music track at the start of the timeline, adjust the volume to your liking, and add a two-second fade-out to avoid a harsh ending. Now let's preview the finished product. Yeah. 